So now that that's dry, I just need to carry on working on the detail of the buildings uh, to make them look three-dimensional and realistic. And I'm mixing a colour now from Naples Yellow and Raw Sienna. For the first part of this, I need uh, this fine number two brush. Naples Yellow and Raw Sienna, sort of a medium strength wash. I'm going to use it on the little roofs of these towers. On the surround to the windows. You can fill it blocking the whole window actually because they're quite dark in the centre. It'll cover this colour up. Okay, all of these windows with this more yellow colour. And I'm now going to take a number six brush and I'm going to take a bit of that colour that I used on the stucco wall, that was the raw sienna and permanent rose, and add that to that yellowy colour I've just mixed. Put a bit of water in it, that'll give us a good colour for the rooftops. The rooftops generally I want lighter than the wall, so I've added a touch of water as well. And I'm going to put this rooftop in. And that one. And that now needs some drying time so that when we get onto more detail on the buildings, we don't get any furry edges where we actually want a hard edge. So to now further develop this building, I need a mixture of dark brown made from burnt sienna and ultramarine blue. This is the richest colour yet, so plenty of pigment, not too much water. And with the number two brush, fine detailer, your brush for this has got to have a really good point. I'm starting now to develop little details, little windows in the tower, the ridges around the rooftops. There's a glimpse of a little window at that edge, the tiniest glimpse of it, really just the point of the brush. Okay, all the way under the roof here. I'm going to give the impression of the curved edge of the tiles. Glimpse of it along that edge as well there under the rooftop here and then with the number six brush and some more shadow colour I'm going to put another little shadow down this side there okay also got to consider that this tower here will cast a shadow across the roof and so will the little chimney there and to make that shadow blend into the tower I'm just running it up again there right into the and with the chimney as well now still with the number six brush and this purple colour. I'm going to put a few suggestions of detail actually onto the roof. A few lines, not too much detail. I never like to start painting every tile too much fine detail. It's better to uh, leave just a few suggestions sometimes. Repeating that now with the dark brown mixture on the number two brush. Just a few indications of lines across to suggest the shapes of the tiles and then still with the number two brush and the dark brown mixture I'm just getting a little bit more of that let's look at these windows again a really good point is essential to get into those corners we need to suggest the recess of the window by putting up that little triangular shape there before filling in the rest of it with the dark paint. Don't be afraid to let your brush go a bit dry and reveal a bit of the texture of the paper. It looks a bit more natural and a bit more weathered. Same principle for this window here. Again, that little triangular shape that suggests using shadow that it is recessed. And it's a case of repeating this 
on all these four windows. Keep checking your angle as well for perspective when you do these. Now the same principle applies to this roof. We want these little curved shapes in to suggest the tiles. And under that edge there. And again I'm getting the purple colour and using that to put suggest a few gaps and cracks between the tiles with the purple and a glimpse of the dark brown in there as well. Okay, still with this number two detailer brush and some more of the purple shadow colour. This is the mixture of ultramarine blue and alizarin crimson. We'll put a bit of shadow onto these towers. Okay, we'll leave that to dry before we start putting some foliage in. So now that the building's totally dry, I've got the greens that I used earlier on. And just before I use them, I'm going to take a number 14 brush, clean water on it, and I'm just going to wet the bottom area here with clean water so that when I apply these greens, we don't get hard edges all the time. And then I've got the number 10 brush, and I'm going to start with that bluey green mixture I used earlier. I was using this when I left off on this left-hand side earlier on. And this is a mixture of viridian and cobalt blue. Bring some of this in right down into here filling in that white area coming down to the masking fluid at the bottom edge there and then I'm going to pick up the brighter green this is the oriolin and cobalt blue mixture and bring some of that along the bottom edge there still working into the area I've just softened with clean water bringing it right through into here a bit of the bluey green as well let these greens just wander into each other and blend into the soft background. You can be quite loose about this area of the painting. I'm now picking up the number six brush and the rich dark green. This is the Viridian Ultramarine Blue and Burnt Sienna and we'll start to put some of these palm leaves in. Again here, you don't need the smallest brush, the number six is fine so long as it's got a good point. A good point is essential for this and work it in and I'm working partly onto the dry background and partly onto the background that's still damp. Get a bit more darking down here so that later on we can have a contrast with the light catching this wall in the foreground. To there. Just again using the very tip of the brush so that these palm leaves are really pointed. It's a light touch required for this. Okay, now I'm going to get the number two brush, the detailer, and I'm going to get some lemon yellow on it. This is just like I used it earlier on. It's almost neat, straight out of the tube, just with a damp brush to pick it up. And we'll put a bit of leaf detailing with the lemon yellow as well. Remember when you get lemon yellow with a dark green behind it, the lemon yellow just turns into bright green. Okay, I'm still with this number two brush. I'm going to try and get a bit more of the darkest green into it. In little flicks with the brush to suggest foliage and leaf shapes. And then I'm going to go back to that bright green, the mixture of Oriolin and Cobalt Blue and put this plant in here. You can't beat swift strokes for something like this. If you labour these strokes too much, they look a bit artificial. First of all, put them all in, put the whole shape coming around full circle with the bright green. And then some of the bluey green. This is the Viridian and Cobalt Blue. So you can use quite a variety of greens in one plant before going into the really rich dark green, the Viridian, Ultramarine and Burnt Sienna. The darkest green you've got, carrying on that, those shapes. Okay, I'm allowing them to go a little bit further, get a little bit bigger now. A 
again, over time, these rapid strokes look far more effective than something done very slowly and deliberately. And finally on this, still with the number two brush, I'm picking up the neat lemon yellow again, and we'll put one or two of these in, in that color, so that it looks like the light is catching a few of these leaves. While all these greens are still wet, I'm going to take some opaque white, and I find it's a good idea to keep opaque white out of the palette. When it's dry, you often can't find it, and it can make your other colors a bit chalky. And I'm going to mix into that a bit of alizarin crimson. So basically, I've got a nice pink flower color, but not transparent. Because of the opaque white, it's now body color. And I'm gonna start putting just a suggestion of a few flowers in here with this. Not too much, it's a light touch, this. And then I'm going to dip the brush in a bit of permanent rose, and add that as well, that little touch of, a, of almost a red. One thing to bear in mind when you're putting in these little flower heads with the opaque white and the permanent rose and alizarin crimson is not to overdo it. Remember, less is more. Okay, we'll leave that to dry. So that brings us to the halfway point in this painting. I hope you'll join me next time to complete the scene. Now available to buy. Try these techniques at home whenever you wish. The extended DVD of today's workshop and the book that accompanies this series are now available from the Painting and Drawing channel. For further information and to order your copy, go to www.paintingdrawingchannel.com.